The 41212 Narrow recently has gotten a lot of love on FIFA 23, with everybody seem to be using it throughout Foot Champions, Division Rivals, along with a variety of other formations. We're going to go through and give you our custom tactics in the 41212 Narrow, which is a formation that takes me back to FIFA 18. It's been so long since I've used it consistently, really. And it's a very solid formation if you want to play Tick Attacker, get the ball moving, quick transition football. That is what we are going to provide with these tactics. As always, when we do these videos, we give you a quick roundup of some of the cards that may be interesting for you to pick up. I recently released a video on Rodri talking about how good he is. I think he's an SBC. If you need a kind of box-to-box -box CM, Rodri can play that role so, so well. I also think he plays better than what his card actually kind of says, if that makes sense. He just performs so incredibly well. I think he's really solid. I know you'll be saying... What about Sergio Busquets? I've already done him. If you've already done Busquets, then you can probably miss out on Rodri. But if you want to pick up Rodri over Busquets, if you have the option, that's fine as well. The Chiesa, Chiesa, I don't know how to say his name. His SBC. I think this raw value of this card, just the, the card in itself is phenomenal. It's outrageous. It's so good. He has pace. He can shoot. He can pass. He can dribble. He's even got decent physical stats. Where he really, really is lackluster is he's four-star, four-star, and he's very expensive, which that means gradually in a month's time, you're probably not going to be wanting to use this card. I want a five-star in something right now, let alone in a month's time as we get closing out towards the end of the game. James Milner, I'll be honest, he has done a job at right back for us. He's scored a free kick and he's okay for an objective. And that's all you really need to know with regards to SBCs and objectives. So in the 4-1-2-1-2, how do I have this set up? Well, very, very simply, I have Osman and Mbappe as my strikers. The perfect combination you are going to want here is a quick striker and a quick striker who's tall. So Tammy Abraham, Osman, all those sort of players that are really good in the air. Your other one should always be a bit more nimble, five-star skills ideally if you can. In a center attack in mid-roll, we have Chiesa. You just need someone who can pass, who can shoot, Ideally, fairly quick as well to break on that counter. Good dribbling, Phil Foden, Chiesa, all those sort of cards. You know Neymar, whoever, you know how they roll in that, that department. Now, interestingly enough, I have Rodri on the left for the cutting and the finesse with Rodri because he has a finesse shot trait and Foden on the right for the cutting and the finesse. You want here a centre mid with high, high work rates, Rodri, and then another CM who is very similar to Foden, like Foden, De Bruyne, Barella, these players that can get up and down, Renato Sanchez, they're good on the ball, they've got good passing, they've got good shooting, good feet, absolutely, you name it. In the DM role, I hope you understand what you want here. It's someone who is defensively sound. I actually use Verratti because I love a ball-playing DM. You could use Vieira, Kante, whoever it may be for you. Uh, Fofana, really doesn't matter. Fine. This is where you have a bit of flexibility in this formation. One of your fullbacks should be going forward more which is Hernandez, and one of them should be holding back, which is Milner for me. So just take into account a more attacking-minded fullback and a more defensive-minded fullback. For our defensive style then, this is always we talk about new gen and old gen when it comes to our custom tactics. Defensive style is going to be balanced. Why? It is the best this year pretty much in all scenarios. You can run, press on heavy touch and press on possession last. If you want to try and get some quick wins, if you want to be really aggressive, just understand you leave more space in behind. You, you allow yourself to step up, be aggressive on that press, and the opponent can catch you out on that. You can change into this in the 60th minute. If you're losing 2-1, that's not a problem, but you can always start the game on balance and you'll get the best there. Now, for our defensive width, we are going to go very neutral here. We're going to go with 50. Reason being... Our left back will essentially be tucking in to help deal with their striker, right striker, left striker, whatever it may be, depending on the formation. And you're actually going to give up some space on the wings when you have a narrow width. That's fine. We are just not going to try our best to avoid the opponent from getting towards the byline. That's where you need to be aggressive with your fullback out on the wing when the ball gets switched over to them. Our defensive style. Again, new gen and old gen, this is the same. We are going to run 50 depth. Why? We don't want to run a 71 depth with a 4 one 2 2 narrow. It is aggressive enough as it is. It gives a lot of space for the opponent to run in behind with. We don't want to go lower depth, though, because we don't want to invite loads of pressure. When you put all your men inside the box, you give up finesse shots, travellers, long-range shots. You make it too easy. 
if the opponent then plays the ball wide, it's so difficult for you to get out quicker when you have a lower depth. Build up play. You're going to notice a pattern here, by the way, as you're watching this. We are going balanced, balanced in build up play and chance creation. And what I want you to do here, what I want you to take away from these tactics is you don't need to do a lot with tactics to get them to work. What it is all about is you triggering L1 to move runners, you moving the ball with a touch and a pass, a first time pass, quick tick attacker, moving the ball up as and when the pitch and the player instructions will help with that as well. And then for our attacking width, you guess it, you named it, it is going to be 50 as well. This actually gives us, when we have our build-up play on balance and chance creation on balance, it gives us the best of everything. That is telling the attacking AI that we have with these team of the season attackers, team of the season midfielders, these high-rated cards. You do what you think is best. And if you want to change that, you tap L1 to send them on a run. You tap R1 to bring them short. You use a player lock. You use a creative run. You get some movement going on what you want in the heat at the moment should you wish to do that. And then for our players in box as well, we are going to go with six. For one, two, one, two, narrow, we do kind of want some of our center mids appearing. So we don't go too deep on that but we didn't go too little either. Just to quickly interrupt this video, we have recently recorded a episode of our podcast with Richard Buckley, the FIFA esports commentator, where we talk about him going through his anxiety and nerves, everything to do with commentating on FIFA and FIFA esports. A link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Come on over, have a listen to that podcast and give it a go. So for our big striker, this is Osiman for me. This is your Tammy Abrahams, you know, whoever it is. Get in behind and stay forward. Why do we want them on getting behind and stay forward? This is the big powerful striker that can hold off defenders that maybe you're playing the through balls in behind to. That's why we use that striker. Our other striker, the more nimble one, your Mbappes, your Ben Yedders, again, whoever, is going to be on stay forward. Let them do the rest of the work there. We don't defend in a 4-4-2 in this 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. We defend in a 4-1-2-1-2. Stay forward on your center attack in mid. This is going to mean you can look for the triangle between these three players so easily and hit on the counter in doing so. Now, for our right centre mid and left centre mid, they're going to be completely unbalanced and they are going to be on cover wing as well. You don't want to compact it in the middle and give your fullbacks a tough job of maybe having to deal with their winger and their overlapping fullback. So Foden would come over and help James Milner if James Milner has a winger and a wing back to deal with. Just be careful when they turn back in to lay the ball on the inside, you need to pull Foden or your right centre mid, whoever it is, back in in that department. For your centre defensive mid, this is the heart of breaking up the counter attack. My variety, cut pass in lane, stay back while attacking, cover centre. Now, this is where this formation gets interesting, actually. Our left back is on balanced. Our right back is on stay back. We defend in a back three when we don't have the ball. Hernandez will get up and down. You have to switch the ball to Hernandez. You're going to play down this left-hand side more than you are right-hand side. And you might say, I've got Quadrado at right back and a more defensive minded fullback at left back. Just switch it round then. It's not a problem. I would probably then put Osiman, your big striker, on the same side as the one on the left or the right, okay? Your right back is on stay back while attacking. Remember, one attacking fullback, one defensive fullback. You can't have them both on balance. Well, you can, but then you really allow yourself to get caught on the counter. It's very risky. I like it myself, but it does mean that you concede a lot more goals. Okay, so that's just a little bit more risky. I want you to give this a go, and I want you to see how these attacking AI on these cards now are so good. Sometimes you don't need to overcomplicate tactics. You can move the ball, you can trigger runs, you can get them moving how you want, and you can actually get a lot going with just very little changes to your custom tactics. Obviously, you can go more in depth should you wish to tweak it. If you notice your depth is too high or too low, change it. If you notice they're a little bit too wide and you want them more narrow, change it. If you want them more wider, change it. Change it based on what you are seeing with your gameplay, with your movement, and what is happening actually on that virtual pitch, okay? If you did miss our latest tactics video, you can click this one here and it will take you over and you can see exactly that.